It is our weekly visit with the Suns player coming off the court here on the Burns and Gambo Show. And this week we are very fortunate and very happy to have joining us on the phone line, I believe from Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, 28 points, 13 in the second quarter, 11 rebounds, 6 assists last night. Yusef Nurkic joining us here for the second time this season on the Burns and Gambo Show. Nurk, good to have you back. I'm Dave. This is Gambo. We appreciate your time, man. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Just landing for Atlanta, so we're ready. Yeah, well, congratulations on a great game last night. I want to talk about that. But first, I want to get your thoughts because not only was it Kevin Durant's return to Brooklyn, it was also Damian Lillard's return to Portland. You know him very well. You played there. Just give me your thoughts on what Damian Lillard meant to that town, that city, uh, and the Portland Trailblazer fan base. I mean, it's insane, I think. Personally, you know, arguably, there's oh, no bro. man out there who knows basketball that don't think that their brother is the um, greatest player of Blazers history. Like, in a young generation, going you know, to always remember Dane, you know, old generation. You know, I've been there for so many seasons. I never see Clyde there present. Uh, even when Dane was, you know, first in the, in the franchise points, you know, didn't see Clyde there. Even I believe Clyde is a great man. To me, just doesn't mean much um, as Dane, like the present wise for the city, for the fans. Um, yeah, I think just a special player. How much mean to me if I didn't play, I'd probably be there at the game. Right, yeah, you would have been there. So, wow, that's interesting. He said that he could see himself finishing his career in Portland. Would you be surprised if he ever puts on a Portland uniform again at some point in his career? Not at all, man. I think that's... Um, so realistic and, and so possible you know obviously you gotta be you know welcome with the with the organization but i think at the end of the day you know that's just the common sense and, and you should you know do that regardless what people think but i think you're gonna finish the career there for sure yeah you said i can almost bet on that <laughs> You can almost bet on that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. My apologies on that one. Um, you got to play no a little. Worries. You got to play a little bully ball last night against the Brooklyn Nets. You got to really uh, show off that physicality, and and I, I I got to imagine you enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, man. Sometimes you know you play different roles and certain centers, and people you know take advantage of that, talking some <laughs> smack, but then all of a sudden they're not in the court and. They try to play small ball, so it was it was good for me. Feeling back, the coaches and teammates believe in me, so it was it was good to have the game and actually win, and just continue the winning. Uh, you know, as our big three getting more comfortable. Yeah, and as as part of the big three getting more comfortable, I want to ask you about something that's just getting more and more obvious with every game that we watch, and that seems to be your level of comfort in passing and distributing the ball and setting the big three up, and in particular, this really nice two-man game that you have working with KD right now. We saw it against the Bulls. We saw it again last night. Do you feel like you have kind of a unique connection with him on the court to play this two-man game together? Definitely. I think the understanding the you know who I am as a person, I think I understand the best so far um, as a player. So knowing the, the, the whatever he do, I'm looking for him out there and any player. But um, just how great he is, he's not really that hard. But also understanding my role, he's not going to be like last night every game. And, you know, looking, you know, my teammates didn't want, you know, or coaches didn't want me to shoot threes and just we need to be better in the roles. And so I was like, I'm all in on this. And, you know, as, as sometimes and most of the time, if you don't like your role and you try to play, something that people don't want you to play and you know I just want to compliment these people and players and, and be the best teammates I can and that's why I'm really a person so I'm trying to do the best um, and, and my role to be a star so whatever it takes to win the game and I'm trying to do you know your ability to handle the ball to make the right pass the way you see the court I, I you know you we see a lot of European big men come into this game in the NBA and a little bit different than some of the American big men but just the ability to almost be like a point guard at, at, at how much of an advantage of it is, is that for you to be able to handle the ball and is that something that comes from your upbringing in the game Look, the funniest part, I was never dreaming about a basketball player or athlete, so <laughs> <laughs> that was a God gift. But um, to me, like, you know, I'm just happy when, when we can, um, 
make it both us happy. Any player who made the system feels like um, two players happy. When you score, it's just, I guess, one player happy. So try to be <laughs> as, a, as a facilitator. It's, it's, it's a good feeling, and especially when you have a ball in your hands, kind of, you know, give you more confidence that teammates and coaches trust you. So if that happens more often, I'm just happy that I can do it. Yeah. The other thing that's impressive is just your recognition. I mean, you you – you know, the previous guy that was here sometimes wouldn't really understand who was guarding him and then would retreat or pass the ball back out to the perimeter. You you know when Cam Johnson or Royce O'Neal or Mikael Bridges is guarding you, um, the, the recognition to understand who's guarding you and to be able to take it aggressively to the basket, that's something that's very noticeable in your game. And, and how important is that to you, to just be able to get that ball and go up quickly when you've got a smaller player on you? I mean, that's basically, you know, how I kept in the league for so long, you know. Like, I'm, you know, like I said, I post game, the coach <laughs> decided to bring the Portland Nurk passing the ball in the post. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, you got to just punish these people when they try to go super small. And I'm glad the coach didn't take me out and, and stay in the game and coach, you know, teammates accepted me on that. But I know I can. So I'm not 39. So <laughs> it's not quite what I said, but it's just a plain. So, we, you know, when you take 10 or 15, 20 shots, you're going to have a great game. But at the same time, you know, I understand that we brought me here to not complain about touches and, and try to, you know, don't take away too much shots of our victory so they can have, you know, the best chance so we can have the best chance to win championship. Yeah, and, and that's Yusef Nurkic joining us here on the Burns and Gambo Show. Last one for me, and I want to ask you about the way the team has played this last month and the way seemingly things have come together. Do you feel like you guys – have gotten where you need to be, or are there things still for you all to work on to make this an even better version of what you've what you've put out there so far this last few weeks or so? I mean, we can always be better, no question. You know, um, but for us, it's, like I said, you know, a few weeks ago, or you know, I personally, for us, want to be as healthy for postseason. So, if um, some games we're not perfect, we're okay with that. Like we, we try to be the best. We possibly can, but if we, you know, lose some games here and there, it's not going to be the end of the world. And we're not going to, you know, super, you know, high or so or so low on, on wins and losses. So we understand what our goal is, and, and we try to be, you know, the healthiest as possible for postseason. And, and that's personally my goal uh, for myself and for the team. So, you know, health is the most important thing with this team, and everybody knows that. So. Yes. Yusuf, last one for me. When you look at where you guys were on Christmas Day and you lost to Dallas, you guys were rock bottom at that point, um, really struggling, and you guys have played terrific basketball ever since. What's the biggest reason for the turnaround, in your in your opinion? I mean, healthy, right? You know, I was not in a Christmas game here. I had a funeral, you know, for my family. So I think the most, you know, turnaround is that being healthy, being, being together, playing the games. You know, practices, uh, just being around each other more. I think the trust is there. Uh, the talent, while you know, never, no one was questioning that. It's just how much it's going to take us, how many games it's going to take us to get together. So, I think every game, no matter win or lose, I think we are closer to that trust. Yusef, we appreciate the time. I know, especially since you're in the middle of traveling and everything. Best of luck tomorrow against Atlanta. Best of luck to close out the trip against Washington. We look forward to talking to you when you get back. Okay, safe travels. Appreciate you guys. You got it. Thank you. Yousef Nurkic joining us here on the Arizona Sportsline Suns and the Atlanta Hawks tomorrow. Three and two so far on this road trip. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.